So for the second derivative calculation uh, in this problem, uh, you're going to see me do a bunch of steps. I'm doing the right steps, but somewhere I dropped a number. Um, and so I'm putting this at the front of the video just to say, hey, on this question on your homework, go ahead and look up a derivative calculator because you won't be doing anything this complicated on the exam, okay, where you won't have the calculator available. Um, so go ahead, use a derivative calculator because this question is really, it's it, like the calculus part isn't super difficult. The difficult part is keeping track of everything. Don't lose a zero, don't lose a negative sign. So they're asking us to calculate the derivative of n of t. So we can go term by term, but sometimes it's easier to split it up if it's factored like this. To, multi to distribute that 2,000 back in. This is 8,000 t. t squared plus 100. So when we take a derivative, uh, we can go term by term. Taking a derivative of a constant is 0. And so we need quotient rule for this derivative. So it's the derivative of the top function times the bottom function unchanged subtracted by the the top function unchanged, I'm running out of room, times the derivative of the bottom function. And the derivative of t squared plus 100 is 2t. So you can't really see it over there because I ran out of room, but that's 2t over there. And it's all over the bottom function squared, so t squared plus 100. <clears throat> okay, so if we can clean that up, we can distribute that 8,000, so that's 8,000 t squared plus uh, 800,000. And so over here, this is 8,000 t times 2 t. So that's 16,000. Yeah, 16,000 t squared. So those t squared terms can combine and make it a little simpler. And I'm just going to save myself some writing because the denominator will be the same. So this is 800,000, unless I missed a zero there, subtracted by 8,000 t squared. Because 8,000 subtracted by 16,000 is negative 8,000. So negative 8,000 t squared. I've just put it to the right. That's all over t squared plus 100. So that's what you'd want to have, at least for this version of the question and for the derivative. And then they want us to plug in particular values. So they want us to plug in 0, plug in 10, plug in 20, plug in 30. So I'll do one of these. Well, maybe I'll do two. But it's pretty straightforward. You're just plugging in 0 into the derivative. So if you plug 0 in here, 0 times 8,000 is 0. So 800,000 minus 0 is 800,000. Let me write that down. I have pen and paper near me. And then 0 squared is 0. 0 plus 100 is 100. So you divide those two. You're going to get 8,000 in for the derivative at 0. And then for the derivative at 10, you're just plugging in 10 everywhere. So in the numerator, we've got this. So 10 squared is 100. <clears throat> okay, and then 8,000 times 10 times 10. So 800,000 minus 800,000, we get 0 in the numerator, so it doesn't matter what the denominator is, this appears to be 0. Okay, so just plugging in 10, plugging in 20 into your derivative. I, think it, I don't think it impacted the last two questions, but look, I forgot my squared. Because the quotient rule, uh, you know, there's the numerator, it's always the the denominator function squared, so I missed that 2 on there. So A was incorrect before, I just fixed it. It needs to have that squared on the bottom. Okay, but the numerator turned out to be 0. I think everything's good there with these numbers. Oh, actually, is this one wrong? I think this one's going to be wrong, because if you plug in 0, that's 100 squared. Yeah, so the numerator would be 800,000 divided by 100 squared, so that should actually be 80. Okay, so sorry about that mistake. So in part C, we're supposed to interpret the results at t equals 0 hours, the bacteria, the population. Uh, actually, I'm not sure what these drop downs are. One second, let me look. It's increasing because it's a positive derivative, so I think that's what it's going to say. This drop down should be increasing. There should be an option like that. 
the bacteria population is increasing and that's because we have a positive slope that's a positive 80 and at 10 hours it's staying constant I'm not sure what the drop down is but you should choose the one that has you know a similar meaning it's not going up and it's not going down because the derivative is zero and then at 20 uh, I think it's going to be negative but I'm not sure 20 or 30 I think they're probably both negative so that means it's decreasing the population is decreasing if it's negative okay now they want us to find the second derivative and plug some numbers in so here is our first derivative to find a second derivative we just need to take a derivative of the derivative okay so same thing we want to use quotient rule so the derivative of the top function 16,000 t times the bottom function kept the same minus the top function kept the same times the derivative of the bottom function so this one needs chain rule the derivative of t squared plus 100 squared is 2 parentheses t squared plus 100 took a derivative of the outermost function and then I'm going to multiply that by 2t the derivative of the innermost function because the derivative of this innermost function is 2t so that's the chain rule and it's all over this bottom function which is already being squared but we need to square it again because that's what the, the quotient rule tells us to do so the denominator is now t squared plus 100 the fourth. Now <clears throat> you could clean this up. I'm sure there's a lot of terms that could cancel in the numerator and denominator or if it's easier for you you could just stop here and use a calculator. Like one thing that might be helpful is to type this whole thing in desmos.com slash scientific. I don't know that might take longer. Maybe it is quicker to clean it up first. Um, because all we need we don't need to type the function in. They just want us to type in the values of the derivative after you know after we plug in x equals 0 x equals 10 um, let, I'll try to oh, this one's ugly okay let's keep that as a squared maybe we can do something because you'd have to square that parentheses so you have to multiply it by itself here I'll do that I, we can do that that's t squared plus 200 t plus 100 zero, 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 zero. and then over here we're supposed to multiply these two things first um, so 2 times 2t is 4t so I'm going to distribute that 4t to everything inside that parentheses so we've got 800,000 subtract by 8,000 t squared and then that's 4t times everything so that's uh, 4t to the third plus 400t. It's all over that crazy denominator. Okay, you might be wondering why they chose such a crazy function, but this is a, a, a logistic function which can be used to model like the population of bacteria because bacteria will grow and grow and grow and then its growth starts slowing down once its resources are all used up. So, Okay, I'll distribute that 16,000t this is just ugly though, isn't it? So that's three million two hundred thousand T squared. And then an even bigger number here. So that's one billion six hundred million. over here is still not done oh my gosh I would just pause here and just use this to plug in numbers just so much writing but it's probably easier with pen and paper instead of using this stupid little mouse but what you're gonna do for these is you plug in zero so if I plug in zero up here this times zero is zero so it doesn't even matter what this is gonna be because that times zero will make zero and if I plug in zero over here just watch the negative sign this is gonna be 800,000 for this term and this is going to be zero. That all distributes to be zero. So it looks like the second derivative is zero here. And then if I plug in 10, uh, this one will be a little harder to keep track of. Um, 
So we got 16,000 times 10 is negative. I'll keep that in mind, copy that to my clipboard. So 10 squared plus 2,000 plus 10,000 times that. So we get negative 1,936,000,000. That's the first term in the numerator. And then over here, if I plug in 10, 10 squared times 8,000. Oh, this is going to be 0. So this this 0 times whatever this is going to be 0. So that's a 0 there. And that's all over. Yeah, it's much easier than cleaning up all the terms. Huh? <clears throat> 10 squared is 100. Oops. We need to raise that to the fourth power. So we got negative one thousand nine hundred thirty. No, sorry, negative negative one billion nine hundred thirty-six million divided by two hundred to the fourth. In other words, I'm going to divide by two hundred four times. One, two, three, four. It looks like I got negative one point two one. Um, okay, so at t equals zero, the rate at which of the bacteria population changing is constant, or something similar to that, because it was a zero. At ten hours, the rate of change at which the bacteria, the rate at which the bacteria population changing is negative, so that means it's it's decreasing, it's going down. Um, so the rate of change is going down, is what that says. And then you'd want to plug in twenty, plug in thirty. I think I thought of one other way to check these. So one other way we could check our work is go to desmos.com/calculator and graph the derivatives. And I think I might have made a mistake on mine, like there might be a zero missing somewhere, because in blue is what an online uh, derivative calculator told me I should actually be getting. And in red is what I actually got. <clears throat> so on an exam, you're not going to have to find a derivative if something as complicated as this. So feel free to use that online technology to check yourself. Um, like I said, what I did by hand, it looks like it's slightly off. Uh, but that's one way you could check to see what those values should be. So like x, x equals negative 10. I plugged in negative 10 into my derivative. Um, ooh, and I got out a... No, sorry, positive 10, positive 10. That's what they told us to do. So x is positive 10. Yeah, I got out roughly the same thing. But it looks like the actual derivative of positive 10 should be negative 4. Okay. Um, so somewhere in here... You know, maybe like at the beginning, how I forgot that squared. Maybe I dropped a number, but <clears throat> um, yeah. So if it's negative, that means the rate of change is is going down. It's decreasing. If it's positive, it's increasing. 